Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about service provider again. In previous video, I quickly introduced how to use service provider and dependency injection to inject a service implementation into a controller. This is our code base. Let's see what we have done. In the message controller, the constructor function accepts a mesh service parameter. The mesh service is the interface we defined or declared with two implementations, email message service and WhatsApp message service. The binding happened in the service provider. We use bind method to build the dependency between mesh service and the email mesh service, which means in the service container, we will use email mesh service at dependency. The email mesh service does nothing but just write some logs. In constructor, it writes constructing email mesh service and send function writes sending message by email. Let's make the API call and quickly see what happened. So you can see there are two log entries, constructing and sending. Now let's make some changes to message controller. Instead of make the, making the function call to service send function, we try to get the dependency from service container again. So let's use a different way to get the dependency. We use app function with the abstract or interface a service declaration. So we use message service interface as a parameter. The class as parameter here, it will return us the email message service instance, which is what we bind in the service container, a service provider. And we can call the function send. Now let's see what happened. Let's make the API call again. You can see the loss constructing email message service to log entries, which means email message service got constructed twice. So in these two lines of code, we got two different service instance. That's because we use bind here. So every time when we try to get a dependency from the service container, a new instance was created. Sometimes there might be some heavy computation involved in the service uh, construction. We don't want to do it every time. So we want to just use one instance during the whole request life cycle. This is a concept we normally know as well, a pattern a singleton. So if we want to use singleton and uh, keep just one service instance in the request life cycle, instead of using bind function, we can use singleton. Let's see what's the difference we can make here. API call again, see the logs. You can see sending message twice, but constructing email message service just once. So it means that in the controller, even when we make two send message, send function calls to the service. The service instance used here, the same. 
There's just one service instance. Okay, so this is singleton. This is not only way to declare singleton. We can also use variable tens. And we declare the mapping between the interface or the abstract to the implementation. Now we can remove this three lines of code. Now we define the singleton in this way. Hit the endpoint again. It's the same constructed once. Okay, so this is how we can define singletons, singleton services, how we can bind them in the service provider. Sometimes we don't have to use, we just simply want to do a binding. We can also use variables to declare such dependencies. We use bindings variable or the property of the service provider. It can achieve the same, same goal. By this change, if we make the API call, we can see from the logs. Now the construction happened twice. So this is how we can use singletons and the bindings properties of a service provider to differently declare the dependency. Okay, I think that's it for today. Hope it helps. If you have any question, feel free to, to comment. Thanks. See you next time. Bye-bye.